Coming up, good news for the accident rate. We dig into the numbers. Plus, a new air show racing series gets approved by the FAA. And challenging a myth. KOP Live this week begins in just a moment. This is AOPA Live This Week with Tom Haynes and Melissa Rudinger. Great news for general aviation. Flying hours are up. The fatal accident rate is down. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Warren Morningstar sitting in for Melissa Rudinger. The 28th annual NAW report from the AOPA Air Safety Institute is out and it shows that the safety improvement trend continues. What's interesting about the NAW report is we can look underneath the covers in great detail and see why it was such a good year. The year is 2016, and that's because it takes the NTSB up to two years to publish a final cause in an accident investigation, and that's simply too long. In this era, for us to have this long a lag between the data and, and the analyzation too of long. the data is just too long. We can't start working to fix the problem until we understand what the problem really is, but as we look at the 2016 data, we can see that some of our fixes are really working. What really stands out is um, our overall number of accidents dropped while GA activity went up in 2016, so that's a double good news story, flying more and uh, having fewer accidents. And specifically in uh, weather-related accidents, typically we have about 32 to 35 fatal accidents a year uh, that are associated with weather. In 2016, it dropped to 12. So almost a two-thirds reduction. I think we're starting to see the movement of the needle, as we all know when we fly. Having that in-cockpit weather available to you that's so uh, accurate is, uh, is so important for your strategic decision-making, and, and we think that's now starting to show up in the safety data. But it isn't just one thing that improves aviation safety. We have gone uh, after safety on five really critical principles, and that is knowledge, training, proficiency, equipment, and culture. And all five of those things move the needle in safety. One of them's not good enough. You have to work on all five of those. And for the equipment piece, the uh, in-cockpit weather is a great example of that. Flying with in-cockpit weather, flying with shoulder harnesses that prevent fatalities. Those, these kinds of things are known deterrents to fatal accidents. The 28th annual NAW report is now in a new all-digital web-based interactive format. The modernized layout allows users to easily locate their areas of interest and quickly search for information. You can find all of the null report numbers at the URL there on your screen. Well, good news, and it's great to hear. Yeah. And it looks like the trend is continuing as well. It, it does uh, look like it's good news. Uh, it's always hard to gauge these things, and it'll be great when the NTSB can figure out how to speed up those accident reports so that we have better data to work with and do things more quickly. But the Air Safety Institute has another product, the GA Accident Safety Core Scorecard, mm -hmm. and that shows that 2017 looks good, and I'm hearing from our air safety folks that 2018 is, look, is pretty good, too. All right, well, that's all great news. Well, the FAA proudly announced this week that it has completed its ADSB build-out on schedule and within budget. Some 155 airports now have ADSB ground transceivers. The last two in Ohio came on last month. ADSB is operational at ADC facilities across the country, including TRACONs and centers. And President Trump has just announced that he intends to nominate an old friend of ours to the National Transportation Safety Board. Tom Chapman is currently the minority counsel to the Senate Commerce Subcommittee on Aviation and Space. He previously worked for Southwest and U.S. Airways, but we know him from his stint as AOPA's Senior Vice President for Government and Technical Affairs. So. Congratulations to Tom. Yep. And another friend of ours to brag about now. If you've called AOPA for help with your medical certification issues, you probably know that friendly Texas baritone at the end of the line, that's Gary Crump. Well, Gary is our director of medical certification and he's been honored by a group of aeromedical doctors. Gary has been elected a fellow by the Civil Aviation Medical Association. Now that's an honor that's rarely given to non-physicians, so congrats to Gary. Yeah, absolutely, congrats to Gary. He's a good guy and very helpful. And hey, while we're bragging, a big honor for the AOPA You Can Fly program. It's been named a recipient of the 2019 Frank G. Brewer Trophy. 
The award is given out by the National Aeronautic Association. It was established in 1943 to honor significant contributions of enduring value to aer aerospace education in the United States. The trophy will be formally handed over at a ceremony next month in Washington. And the latest version of the AOPA Airport Directory Online is out, and it now gives you a voice. Now you can help your fellow aviator by reviewing the places and businesses that appear in the directory. It's a star-based ranking system that allows you to add comments and photos. You can like other users' comments as well. It's all designed to give you confidence when you fly. Months after the final Red Bull Air Race, a new event gains FAA approval. The Airshow Racing Series is set to launch next year. Hits two airplanes side by side down a pylon course. They'll fly under 75 feet above the ground to navigate a slalom layout before making a half Cuban 180 turn to a second pass. First race is set for the Wings Over North Georgia Airshow, October 2020. So look forward to that. Hey, and much sooner, lower and slower than that. The Stoll Drag World Championships happening next weekend at the High Sierra Fly-In. AOPA is a sponsor of that event. It's happening there on the Dead Cow Lake Bed, north of Reno. That's a real place, folks. Stoll Drag made its Reno Air Race debut this year as an exhibition event. Next year, it becomes the newest class of added at Reno in more than 20 years. AOPA will be at High Sierra for the excitement. Hope to see you as well. For more information, check out StollDrag.com, and we'll have more coming out of that in the next couple of weeks. When we come back, the latest apps to use when you fly. And challenging the old school of thought. We'll be right back. The people of AOPA's Legal Services Plan work to help protect your certificates, and they love to fly as much as you do. The AOPA Legal Services Plan is offered as part of our Pilot Protection Services. It's a members-only benefit provided to thousands of pilots like you. Welcome back. It's out with the old. If you're still using the old Pilot Web portal on the FAA website, you need to find a new favorite. The old school site is going the way of CompuServe come February. It's going to be shut down. There are plenty of other better, more efficient ways to get information, such as the FAA's NOTAM search websites. Okay, show of hands here. How many of you fly with an iPad on your yoke or on your knee? Okay, I see there are a bunch of you. And there are a bunch of flying apps for your iPad. Sporty's Pilot Shop is out with its latest list of apps. They range from an altitude alerter through some AOPA apps, thanks Sporty's, to a simple display to help you figure out Zulu time. You can find Sporty's Aviation App Directory at the URL there on your screen. And something else you can find from Sporty's, free shipping if you order on October 16. The offer is good for AOPA members, so it's a good time to get started on your holiday shopping for all of those pilots in your life. And another question for you, is the book always right? Now, we're not encouraging you to ignore the POH, but as Dave Hirschman found out, every once in a while, for some airplanes, it doesn't hurt to test what it says in the book. Airshow fans call it the sound of freedom, but the ear-splitting racket made by propeller tips reaching supersonic speed is quite the opposite. It's lost performance, inefficiency, and wasted effort. Take this Cessna 180 Skywagon, for example. It's equipped with a seaplane prop that spins at unusually high RPM during takeoff. Full power. With the prop lever full forward and wide open throttle, the Skywagon takes 14 seconds and 620 feet to get airborne, and the noise level beside the runway is 98 decibels. It takes about 1 minute and 50 seconds for the Skywagon to get to pattern altitude, and once there, the pilot reduces RPM to 2,500 as per the pilot's operating handbook. All this is totally normal, and it's in keeping with the way pilots were told to fly these airplanes since day one. But what happens when the pilot sets 2,500 RPM on the ground? Does performance suffer? Well, let's just see. Full power. At the reduced RPM, the Skywagon's takeoff roll is shorter, its rate of climb is faster, and the airplane gets to pattern altitude quicker. Oh yeah, and it's 10 decibels quieter, too. So what's the downside? In extreme cases, high manifold pressure and low RPM reduces detonation margins. Also, lower RPM means less total horsepower, but in the Skywagon's case, more of that horsepower is converted to thrust, so it still comes out ahead. 
Consult your engine manufacturer to see if adjusting your max RPM will benefit you. Let's not keep doing what we've been doing just because we've always been doing it that way. Dave Hirschman, AOPA Live. <laughs> well, that's very interesting. <laughs> it is interesting, and, and Dave's always wanted to challenge the system. Yes, so. he is. But yeah, there are, but there are a few airplanes where the props, uh, prop tips go supersonic. Oh, I think there's some bonanzas that do Yeah, it as well. you know, a two blade uh, bonanza can just just split your your ears. It is so loud, and just backing off a little bit can make a big difference. So it's maybe worth testing when you have a long runway. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and finally, Jay Leno is getting into aircraft quite literally. Here he's getting into John Travolta's BBJ. Now that's the business jet based on a Boeing 737. This is the latest episode of Jay's Garage, which you can find on CNBC. In this episode, he looks at the intersection between aircraft and autos. He even tries flying an Icon A5. But we really have to question Jay's perception of the most advanced LSA flying. Pretty simple cockpit looks Looks like the inside of a 57 Renault Dauphine. <laughs> really, Jay? A Renault? A Dauphine? The insides look nothing alike, nor the outsides for that matter. But the show is an in interesting look at a variety of aircraft, and it's worth streaming when you have a moment. The guys that Icon are probably not very happy about that comment. <laughs> <laughs> probably are not. <laughs> so that's it for this week. Thanks for being with us. If you're watching on YouTube, please like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> and send us your thoughts to the address on the screen. We'd like that too. Otherwise, see you next week.